I'm here with Balan Nair, who's the uh, EVP and CTO of Liberty Global. Balan, um, cable versus fiber and DSL providers, what advantages does cable have over the other infrastructure-based um, service providers, and what are the key points that's going to keep it ahead? You know, one of the great things about the cable industry is we have this amazing, fungible network. And it's very fiber-rich. Um, it's powered by some amazing technologies developed in the cable industry, namely like DOCSIS. And, um, and, and this fungible network is very extensible. We are now taking it to the next level where we are pulling fiber all the way to the home in many cases. We're pulling fiber all the way to the point where we don't need amplifiers. We call it N plus zero. And even without doing fiber to the home, at the N plus zero level, we will eventually, very soon, be able to do 10 gigabits both symmetrically, both directions. Uh, I love the HFC network. And the most important thing about it, beyond its fungibility and extensibility, is its cost structure. And it's by far the most efficient network out there. And we're very lucky to have it. Great. Now you're in the middle of a project to sort of refocus the company on Liberty Go. Can you tell me what are the key objectives you have there and what are those going to achieve for, for Liberty Go? Liberty Go is a project internally where we are trying to do a few things. One, reinventing ourselves. Two, reallocating capital to a whole bunch of growth projects. And three, trying to kind of, you know, capture and uh, drive some of the efficiencies we can get with scale. And, uh, and we are on a good track on all three fronts. The most important thing really is about reinvesting uh, in our business. And uh, the three fundamental areas are in new builds. We're gonna build out to about seven million new homes pass in the next two and a half years. That is pretty significant. That is larger than a lot of cable companies. So we're gonna build a brand new cable company in you know, two and a half years. Last year we built about 1.1 million new homes passed. That's the equivalent of building out all of our, the whole of UPC Ireland, our business in Ireland, in one year. So this is a pretty significant effort. We're marshalling all of our resources uh, to it. The second area we're investing in is in mobile. We expect huge organic growth in our mobile products, which we've launched in multiple countries. And third is in B2B, primarily in the Soho area, the small office, home office, where we are doubling down with new products, services, and we see that also as a double-digit grower for us. So, yeah, we're quite, Liberty Go is really a reinvention and a reinvestment in the business. And a part of this is a new sort of set-top box platform that's going to be rolled out across the the whole of Liberty, Glo uh, Liberty Global's footprint, including yeah. the UK. How, what, is the, what is this box going to achieve for you and how will it be rolled out across all your different uh, territories? Sure. So on the consumer side, in the video business front, we are investing in a new platform, both in the back office and what we see in our consumer homes. And in the consumer homes, as you pointed out, we are rolling out this new box called EOS which is based on a software stack called RDK with a very new UI <clears throat> and it has 4K, it has 802.11ac, um, really high charge Wi-Fi in it. It's a hybrid box that transitions to an all IP. It's cloud-based, it's cloud-based from the software, from the UI perspective, it's cloud-based from a storage perspective, it's cloud-based also in many ways from a middleware perspective. So, and you can imagine when you do that, one, you get a very cost efficient box as well. But from a consumer standpoint, you're gonna get an amazing UI, great integration of a lot of web content, a, a great way to navigate, search, get your recommendations, and you get this all in 4K. It's amazing. Right, and on the broadband side, one of the areas obviously that is being discussed a lot at the moment is the Wi-Fi in the home and uh, the general delivery of new video services to multiple devices. How can you accommodate that sort of explosion in demand for video and high definition video across different devices over Wi-Fi in the home? So Wi-Fi is a big part of our story in, in the home. And on that front, we've invested in companies like Solino, which develops, you know, right now, a 4x4 Wi-Fi chip. 
Um, we've embedded that into our devices. We're in investing in software development to help with beam forming and airtime management. And we, we're building a product right now where Wi-Fi is really an important part of that development. It used to be when we developed devices, Wi-Fi is kind of like a checkbox. <clears throat> you have Wi-Fi, you don't. It's no longer the case. Now we are building to like extremely excellent Wi-Fi because of a couple of things. One, that's how consumers interface with our product, <clears throat> with our broadband service. Second, the proliferation of devices. Wi-Fi was not originally built to support hundreds of devices in, in the home. And so we've got to think differently about that. And third, the actual speed that consumers want off their Wi-Fi is now approaching the gigabit space. And therefore, you, start, you need to start looking not only at speeds at the DOCSIS level in your network, but speeds inside the home over Wi-Fi propagation. How big a part of your overall mobile play involves Wi-Fi? What else are you doing on the mobile side at a sort of company-wide level, as opposed to just a, a lo within local operations? Well, mobile is a big part of our future. <clears throat> We've deployed mobile in a number of countries. It's not um, an either-or. They're not mutually exclusive, mobile and Wi-Fi. Um, Wi-Fi continues to be the Fi interface most devices would connect to. And the bandwidth capacity and speeds on Wi-Fi today far outstrip anything on 3G, 4G. Now, <clears throat> that doesn't mean that um, we can say we just do Wi-Fi and, and you don't need to do mobile. Or you can say that we're just we're doing mobile and you don't need to do Wi-Fi. You need to be in both and you do both very well. Great. Finally, there's been a lot of discussion over IoT and what opportunities that might provide to cable. How big is Liberty Global going to go in IoT and what opportunity do you think it has? What do you need to do to support it? Well, we're in the beginning stages of IoT, <clears throat> but it is clear almost every device will have some sort of connectivity and some sort of a sensor on it, whether it's your mobile device, your refrigerator, uh, <clears throat> pills, you know, anything. Your, thermostat, so you want to be able to build an, um, a network that one can easily seamlessly connect to these devices, two, be able to embed rules so you can use these devices intelligently. And, um, and you can do it within your modem, you can do it as a separate device, you can do it as a different software stack. We are going to be in that space. now. We are still in the beginning stages. There's still a lot of standards work that are going in different directions. Google's going up a different paths than Apple. And um, <coughs> you know the consumer electronics industry is going down a different path. Eventually, there will be harmonization, both on the interface protocols, but there will also be harmonization in the radio interface. Today, you have Bluetooth low energy, you have Zigbee, you have Wi-Fi, you have you know, RF4C, you have so many different approaches. All that needs to be harmonized for this to be really cost efficient. Great. Balan, thanks very much. You're, you're welcome. Thanks.